Hey everybody, Alex Kazora, SteelersDepot.com, back to preview Week Three's matchup tomorrow. Pittsburgh Steelers two and O hosting the O and two Houston Texans. Want to do a quick video recap or previewing this game? Rather, we'll have the recap after Sunday's game sometime in the afternoon or the evening. And I think obviously Houston is going to be the toughest task for Pittsburgh so far. They're O and two, yes, but the context is they've lost to arguably two of the best teams in football in the Kansas City Chiefs in week one, Baltimore Ravens in week number two. And offensively, it all starts with Deshaun Watson. And Watson, you know, he's not the number one quarterback in football, but to me personally, he's one of my favorite. And his ability to extend the play and to throw off platform and throw from any arm angle, any, you know, muddy pocket, then he's got, he's had to deal with a lot of muddy pockets with their pass protection struggling, uh, that O-line not being, uh, the best in football, far from it. But uh, he's able to to work well in the chaos, and I really respect him for that. I've been a big fan of Watson since his days at Clemson, and he's one of the top quarterbacks in the football. Not the best, but certainly up there, and he's by far uh, the best quarterback this team will have faced through the first three weeks. And I think his mobility, his ability to throw off platform and still have some weapons around him, although obviously they're missing DeAndre Hopkins, makes this Texans offense fairly potent. In the run game, if you look at just their run numbers, it doesn't look great. They're 30th in yards if they're 31st in attempts, but that's been because they're playing behind in some of these games uh, in Kansas City and Baltimore in Week 2 last Sunday, and so that hasn't made their run numbers in aggregate look good. But David Johnson is averaging a healthy average. He's their 15th in yards per carry. Um, he's a weapon in the pass game. He's probably going to be their main and really only you know true running back because Duke Johnson if he's out with an ankle injury then um, they really won't turn to anyone else Watson of course can can run and be a threat but uh, they run a good zone scheme they have good split zones their pass game works off their run game well they'll do play actions hit the tight end in the flat or go second level and so their their pass game and their run action really complements the run the run game and the run scheme really well which can be problematic for the Steelers. In the past game, they're missing DeAndre Hopkins, but they have some speedsters in Will Fuller, Brandon Cooks. Cooks is averaging over 16 yards per catch, and Fuller is a legit you know, vertical threat, even though his average is around 12, which is not terrible, but he can definitely house it on any single play, and he should be able to play this weekend. He had a hamstring injury, but he should be full go for tomorrow's game against the Steelers. And tight end, Jordan Akins is their leading receiver in terms of receptions with nine of them, and they do a great job of having some blitz beaters. Uh, they'll run wide stick a little five yard out to the tight end and uh, be able to uh, beat the blitz if you're bringing DB pressure or maybe Vince Williams or Devin Bush, someone through the B gap like the Steelers like to do. So Pittsburgh's probably going to have to scale back their blitzing some because I think, obviously, with the quarterback play of Watson and schematically, I think this team's better equipped, talking about Houston, to handle and beat the Blitz better than the Giants in Week 1. Brand new team, new coaching staff, and then the Broncos Week 2, especially after they had to turn to Jeff Driscoll, who played well, but just took a beating in that game. Defensively, for the Texans, it's more of an older school front. I mean, they're still obviously blitzing and stunting and one-yapping, but they do play a little more traditional, kind of like the Steelers, but the Steelers probably play even less traditional um, in terms of their front than what Houston does. They really want to get the linebackers free with McKinney and Cunningham. They're two leading tacklers. Cunningham, I believe, is tied for third in solo tackles in football. So their D-line does a good job of taking on blocks and getting the linebackers free. And their linebackers are physical and really thump and fit well in the run game. And, of course, you can't talk about the front seven to four the Texans without talking about J.J. Watt, who's been their best player by far. No surprise. Two sacks this year for five quarterback hits, and they will line him primarily – as the lefty end, so he'll be facing Chuck Wilma core for so a big challenge for, for Chooks, no doubt about that. Did well last week, but this is a totally different matchup for him this week. But they'll also move Watt over center and align him as a zero tech or a one tech, especially on rundowns. And so Pouncey will have to see some J.J. Watt and how they double team him and how they slide protect and stuff like that will be interesting to see. Texans do bring a lot of pressure. They are sixth in blitz rate at over 35% of the pressure. Uh, has not been there. They're up 27th in football in terms of actual pressure that they've generated. So they are sending guys. They're trying to be aggressive. They'll go with some quarter packages, 227 with seven DBs on the field and send some of those guys. Hasn't been effective yet, but you do have to account for it because there aren't going to be a lot of hands on the ground. Guys are going to be moving some athletes on the field, and that has gotten this Steelers uh, team in, into trouble uh, in the past. And so that's going to be, I think, a mission for Pittsburgh is just being able to identify and slide protect and have the running backs and on the right page and, and, and making sure they're picking this stuff up. Coverage-wise, I don't know what Houston's going to do. Uh, in week one against KC, they played a lot of man against Baltimore last week. It was more of a mix of man and zone. I will say, though, for Houston, 
is that they're kind of playing with 11 guys for the first time this year because in week one, they had to deal with Mahomes and his run threat. Week two, they had to deal with Lamar Jackson and his run threat. They're not going to have to worry about that with Ben, obviously. They're not going to have to worry about an option offense and all of this. They, the Steelers window dress, but not to the level and not to the effectiveness of Kansas City and Baltimore. So it kind of feels like Houston's getting their 11th player back because in the past two weeks, they always had to have somebody basically worried about the quarterback run and worry about you know their contained and rush lanes and stuff like that. Not going to be necessarily the case to that extreme uh, when facing Ben Roethlisberger. So I think Houston will benefit from that, to be honest with you. All right, for my prediction, and this will not be a popular prediction, I can tell already, can already see the comments. I have the Texans winning this one in the upset 24-23 over the Pittsburgh Steelers. And hope I'm wrong, rooting for myself to be wrong here. But I think the Texans, their offense is obviously better than what we've seen from the Giants and from the Broncos. I think they'll have a better balance of run and pass. Obviously, the best quarterback they're facing. And I think they just scheme up defending the Blitz well. And this was a Steelers team that did struggle uh, against the Broncos to some extent, where the Broncos got back in that game, nearly won that game, certainly in position to do so. And this defense, while still playing well, has had some coverage busts and some mistakes. And I think you make those mistakes against Deshaun Watson, against the talent around him, against some of the speedsters like Cooks and Will Fuller, uh, he's going to make you pay. So, and defensively, like I said, I just think whenever you're a defense that's faced two of the top offenses in football and two of the best quarterbacks in football, um, it makes this game maybe feel a little bit easier. Not easy by any means, and the Steelers' offense can be strong, and there's certainly uh, a ways to go for this offense to get better, and if they can really you know, get on all cylinders and be more consistent, better out of the gate, and that's going to be important. And two of the last stat I would tell you is uh, the, the, the turnover battle will be huge. The Steelers have turned the football over in 25 straight games, which is an absurd streak. And the Texans have yet to record a takeaway this season. Only two games against good offenses. But uh, if the Steelers can break that streak, then I'm probably wrong about my, about my prediction. But if the Texans can create some turnovers, as has been the case in the last 25 games for opposing teams facing Pittsburgh, then Houston, I think, comes out on top. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Am I wrong? Will the Steelers go to 3-0? and Or do you agree with me and the Texans will get their first victory and hand the Steelers their first loss of the season? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.